Good afternoon, everybody. I hope you all hear me. Yes. Yes. Uh, my name is uh, Gita Rosenberger. I am chief librarian at the Library of the University of Latvia and manager of Open Air Advance project in Latvia. Today, here will be held a webinar, Use of Creative Commons License for Research and Education. I am happy to say that in program will be two speakers from Czech Republic. Lucy Smolka is a lawyer in intellectual property and information and communication technology issues and representative of open content organization and Creative Commons Czech Republic. Lucy will give insight about Creative Commons in global context. Yuri Marek is Open Science Manager of Data Security and Management Department of Institute of Computer Science at Masaryk University, as well as representative of Open Content Organization. And he will tell about more practical questions related to Creative Commons licenses, as tool to open research, to open knowledge. Now, please give your attention to some practical issues during the webinar. A webinar will be recorded for questions, so will be given time at the end of webinar. If you have any question, please write them in the chat box or question and answer box. Video record and presentations will be accessible on the web page of National Open Access Desk Latvia, as well as the information will be sent to all participants by emails. Now, I am happy to invite on the stage Lucy Smoka. You are welcome. Uh, hello, Gita. Thank you very much. Uh, can you hear me, everyone? Is, yes. it, is it OK? Perfect. And the record is started, of course. OK, so and you also can see my presentation, right? Yes. OK, perfect. So uh, thank you very much. Um, Thank you for having me and also having my colleague Jirka. We are really happy to be here, uh, at least through this online presence. So my name is Lucy. Uh, I'm working as a lawyer in the area of intellectual property, uh, online and digital law areas. And I'm also acting as a Creative Commons chapter lead in the Czech Republic and as a leader of Czech NGO uh, Open Content where we are dealing with special areas of legal challenges and obstacles to sharing. So I would like to start my short presentations about our motivation and mission and current projects. And then I will give uh, the word to Jirka and he will talk more about the system or the use and about possible challenges when you are dealing with public licensing, and especially with Creative Commons. So uh, Creative Commons uh, is the world's leading nonprofit organization, uh, which is trying to remove legal and technical obstacles to sharing knowledge and creativity. Uh, and uh, it's trying to help uh, the society overcome the most pressing challenges from climate change to health emergencies. And now for nearly two decades, Creative Commons has been removing these obstacles to sharing to uh, the set of open licenses and to public domain tools, as well as uh, through advocacy for copyright reform and open policies. So today we work not only on the licenses, but on a variety of projects and activities. Um, this whole Creative Commons network was originally focused on legal support and translations of Creative Commons licenses. Um, now the network connects over 85 Creative Commons uh, affiliate, affiliates or chapters around the world. And this huge network creates a global initiative with enormous impact. So it allows us to focus on uh, other areas as well. 
because in the beginning uh, we started with building legal infrastructure for the open web uh, to help um, millions of users and creators and uh, enthusiasts and um, volunteers to provide free legal tools to be used um, in the context of um, special special areas of work of these people and also in local languages so we also translated this um, set of licenses but over time the broader community grew and we expanded into new spaces including uh, including free culture including open data copyright reform uh, open science uh, open education open data and many more and seven years ago we transformed our set of licenses uh, we launched the 4.0 system 4.0 version of the cc license suite which uh, eliminated these local country versions in favor of only one international license. So we uh, transformed the system and we have only one set of licenses for the whole world, which, um, which uh, is, uh, is very special and which allows every state to work in the same way with the licenses. Um, Specifically this year was very challenging and these challenges and crisis we have witnessed during um, during this this year, this special uh, coronavirus time, uh, it raised questions um, about a lot of areas, about, about power, about privilege, uh, about who has access to knowledge uh, in, in our society. And we know that uh, too often it's uh, this excess, it's in the hands of the few, uh, not in the hands of many. And with Creative Commons, uh, we try to change this. Uh, we have a role um, in this global movement to challenge power, to challenge privilege. And we are trying to solve this situation and we are trying to open up, open up access and share knowledge. Uh, specifically, uh, during this coronavirus crisis, uh, there was some progress made. Uh, we saw some, uh, some paywalls came down and some institutions shared their research. And this is what we are trying to do all the time. Um, it's just a shame that uh, it took a global pandemic to realize this and to implement these new ways of sharing. Um, to be to be true, uh, for every step forward, there, there is also a step backwards. So now we know that some countries, some some nations have. Um, have imposed restrictions on the right to information and not all of them have restrained, reinstated them. And therefore too many knowledge remains out of reach. Um, museums and libraries are shut in many countries and digital access is not available for so many. So, um, breaking down these barriers and opening doors, it's not easy. But uh, in Creative Commons, uh, we are trying to change this. Um, good example is a National Emergency Library, uh, which was designed by, maybe you know this, uh, this um, initiative by Internet Archive to make over 1.3 million ebooks available and it was all free of charge. So it's possible, we can do this. It just um, needs some, some will and some tools. So earlier this year, Creative Commons um, joined forces with uh, some international groups of researchers and academics and lawyers. And um, they are trying to 
we are trying to uh, accelerate the development and opening up um, the knowledge and the research. And uh, to do this, uh, the new tool was created. It's called uh, Open COVID Pledge. This project offers a very simple way for universities, for companies, and um, for NGOs, how to make their, their knowledge, their research, their patents, their, their copyright available to the public and to be utilized uh, for the helping with the current crisis. Um, if you know Creative Commons licenses, it would be uh, pretty easy for you because um, users who are using Creative Commons licenses um, regularly will be familiar with this because like Creative Commons licenses, this Open COVID pledge uh, offers free uh, public licenses that anyone can use uh, to remove obstacles and to allow other, other people uh, to disseminate the knowledge, uh, which is usually uh, locked by copyright or patent rights. So already uh, dozens of companies and institutions is using this open code pledge uh, license to make their research available. And they are trying to help uh, with this tool to solve this uh, global pandemic. Um, the work of Creative Commons, um, what we are trying to do, uh, helped help a lot during this crisis. And it's been proved crucial uh, during this pandemic because um, the obvious, the obvious um, saying that uh, sharing is caring um, is very, very, very true in this, in this, um, in this sense. And this open COVID pledge uh, made it easier for everyone uh, who is holding some intellectual property to open it and to support development of of medicine, of vaccines, of test kits, of or to um, do some more necessary research. So what we are trying to do in the Czech Republic specifically uh, is uh, that we uh, created, started for the purposes of sharing knowledge and for teaching about ways of sharing and uh, for teaching the new ways how to how to share knowledge and how to how to uh, create new ways we have uh, started this ngo called open content and uh, me and Jerka and our other colleagues we are helping um, other people other ngos and also local governments and some uh, government initiatives. We are helping with all the aspects of digitalization. Uh, we are trying and helping to solve legal challenges and we are creating new ways of sharing knowledge using modern methods and technologies. Um, right now, we have this new project, big, big new project. It's called Reuse System Management. And in this project, um, we are, we are um, analyzing and trying to find solutions on reuse of data, uh, of intellectual property, and also um, reuse of project management with, uh, with utilization of, uh, of um, um, current resources and creating reusable initiatives and also reusable results. This pro project is trying to um, trying to uh, represent or trying to recreate a circular economy in the cyber world. So we are trying to reuse all the 
um, all the knowledge and all the IP we are already having and we are trying to use it elsewhere or we are trying to introduce it to someone else who is not using it but um, he still needs it or he's trying to reinvent it itself. So uh, as a result, uh, we will create a methodological procedure for implementation of this reuse system. And we are also uh, creating some online tools um, which will help um, self-assessment and self-improvement of local governments and NGOs and also commercial subjects. Uh, so, this is basically uh, everything from me. Uh, this year is very challenging, so we are trying uh, to find ways and create means and tools to make both the digital and the physical world to be a little bit of a better place to live in. And we are trying to do it in this uh, in this uh, challenging times as well and as it was before. But um, if you can help us or uh, anyone else, uh, it would be great. So thank you for having me and uh, I will pass the word to my colleague Jerka. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lucy. Please, Yuri, the stage is yours. Can you see it, please? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much for introduction. Thank you very much for the introduction presentation for Lucy. Actually, as you can see, uh, she had the black, uh, black label of the presentation, you know, and with the networks, you know. So she is the CEO of our uh, non-governmental organization. So she has everything in the context, you know, and presenting in, in the global way. And now uh, you got the, uh, in, in Spanish, it's called payaso, you know, it means a clown, you know, the chief marketing officer, that's me, that is going to talk a little bit uh, how uh, you can use these Creative Commons uh, licenses in your every everyday practice as a legal tour for opening your science and education, basically. And as, uh, um, as um, uh, Gita uh, said it in the, uh, at, um, uh, in the introduction, sorry. So uh, I also work as open science manager of Masak University uh, here in Brno, and we are both from Brno with, uh, with Lucy also. So uh, hopefully I will be able also to, uh, to answer your questions here in the discussion. So I will not um, waste more time and let's go for it that we have more time for the discussion. So basically our presentation, we will, uh, we will have three parts, you know, what are Creative Commons licenses in a practical way? How can you think about it, how you can imagine it basically? Then uh, it is strongly connected with copyright law content as Lucy mentioned in the pre previous presentation. And then we will have a uh, space for discussion and you can try to ask me and I will try to uh, I will try to give you an answer because I hope that I have already some experience in international law and uh, also the, in the international open science practice. So hopefully uh, I will be able to, uh, to respond to your question. So let's go and start with the first uh, thing. What are Creative Commons li common licenses? So basically, uh, I just put here the key message, you know, this is what you should bring home from this presentation, you know. This two, uh, basically one, uh, one uh, equation and one specification, you know. So if you have a copyrighted artwork, that means, for example, your scientific article, you know, you add the licenses or licensing condition Creative Commons, then you have open copyrighted artwork. You know, this is the basic equation. And if you understand that, that the copyright artwork is the mouse, you know, what you have written, you know, your, your work, and you add these conditions, uh, namely Creative Commons kind of conditions of these six or uh, six types, you know, plus one that I will talk about it later. So I will, I will show you uh, in more detail these, these conditions and differences. And then uh, you have these open copyright artwork. So this is really important. You know, you have the thing, you have the tool, and you have the output. 
And then uh, the, what does it mean copyrighted artwork actually in the science or education? It means scientific article, scientific monography, creative research database, etc. Of course, I'm from the Czech Republic and uh, you are from Latvia. So I don't have, um, I don't have a uh, knowledge, uh, so deep knowledge about Lat Latvian copyright law, but because there is no global copyright law, but uh, it's, um, it, it would be probably, uh, I can say for 99% that scientific article and also scientific monography or creative research database will be copyrighted artwork also in your legal system. Then uh, this, is, this is it, you know, and now I will talk a little uh, more deeply in each of these concepts and then you can create, uh, that we can create together an image what, uh, how you can use this Creative Commons uh, license. So let's, uh, let's go uh, further. Here, uh, as, uh, as was mentioned, this is the definition basically of, a, uh, of a artwork uh, based on the Czech copyright law, but uh, it's following the international principle. So again, the, the, the green thing you should, uh, you should remember that artwork is literary work or other work, that means also scientific, for example, or art. Uh, un and it is unique outcome of the creative activity. So your basically creative ability and it's objectively uh, objectively perceivable manner. So this, that means that your creativity inside your head that is not objectively perceivable because nobody can read your mind, you know, but written uh, on the article, you know, in the, on the paper, you know, that is objectively that you can, you can show to your colleague, for example, that is basically the definition of what artwork means in general, you know, there are very uh, special uses, etc. But for the general knowledge, this is important that you, uh, you have this clear. So basically, uh, because we uh, like a lot of cats, you know, in our open content, uh, non-governmental organization, and especially Lucy likes that. So uh, we, we, are try, we are going to use in this presentation, basically, uh, sometimes a cat, you know, so don't be afraid. Uh, they are just nice, uh, nice creatures. So what are licenses and what is uh, public about them? So basically, um, Creative Commons licenses, they are public so-called public licenses. So uh, why they are public, you know, this is, this, is the, this is the question here. So, but firstly, what's the license? License is an institute by which the owner of the property, for example, you as an author, uh, has rights to a work, um, property rights to a work, allows other to work with work in a particular way. So what does it mean? So license means uh, that it's a tool that gives uh, an author an option to let someone else to give uh, to do something with, the, uh, with his work. You know, this, this is the license. Basically. And uh, I will uh, explain in the next slide why it is public. So the author in the copyright law in the general terms has two set of rights personality rights and property rights. Personality rights, at the first uh, green uh, box, it's right uh, to authorize, uh, right to publish the work, for example, right to be, to not uh, um, diminish the value of the, of the work, you know, that means, for example, if you have this cat, you know, and you share it openly, so you can use it under these conditions, but for example, if you put it in the context with some racism or uh, or war or some terror, so this is diminishing the the uh, the level uh, or the, the value of the artwork and the uh, author, even if he g gave you the complete license, you know, to do anything. So this is the right that he still conserves, you know, so he can sue you go with uh, you to the to the court you know and to uh, you can have problems also with it but this is this is one thing and then you have property rights that's uh, about the right to reproduction dissemination communication to the public and that means these rights the property rights are the ones that you are licensing you know the personality rights you can't try license basically in the in the European context of copyright law but the property rights uh, you license yeah that's that's it so, and what, uh, what are, uh, what's the public thing there, you know? So basically public license is non-exclusive, free of charge, uh, provided through the period of protection of all the time to indefinite, sorry, circle of people. The licenses may further disseminate the work. It can be obtained implicitly. 
So what does it mean? So the public license mean that it's non-exclusive. That doesn't mean that it's not exclusive to one. It's not to one person. You know, it's for everyone. It's free of charge. It's uh, unrevocable. That means that is uh, if you license something under this license, that means that for the eternity, that is uh, this artwork uh, protected. So you waive these rights. You know that you license, and then. Uh, to indefinite circle of people, this is the public thing that it's public offering, you know, you don't know who will come, you know, because usually the contract uh, license is actually a special type of contract and contract is um, I am person A, for example, me as Yuji will make a private contract with Lucy, you know, and that's contract between two people. But if you are working in the internet and you put, uh, you put um, your artwork to use uh, by anyone else, you know, so that means that you uh, don't know who will use it, you know, so it's tot it's not practical and actually it's not possible to have bilateral contact contracts with each of these persons, basically. So you actually have a public offering with this public license that everyone, and that's the last sentences, you know, that it can be obtained implicitly, that means that if I am... Um, I'm um, using the artwork according to the uh, condition that are written in the license, so I can use it, you know, and that's it, you know, that you make some action, that means that right use of the artwork according to the licenses, so this gives you the permission to use it, you know, this is the public license construct. And there are not only Creative Commons, but there are also Genius, GPL, MIT, BSD, BSD, Mozilla Public License. These are, for example, public licenses that are more uh, common in uh, in software, open software source, source uh, area. Okay, so how it all began. This is the Creative Commons sign. Uh, probably you already uh, seen it somewhere. Uh, the person, the, the important person is Lawrence Lessig, uh, and this is professor from Harvard, actually from the IT law. Uh, it, it has a similar background as we have with Lutzi. And uh, he, he, he was thinking, you know, that there is a commercial culture, non-commercial culture, and the protection of works for 70 years. There is some sort of privacy. Uh, there was also a special case, Eldred case. And uh, that's, that's basically uh, what what he can do that with that, you know, in the age of internet, you know, because as I mentioned in the start, you know, there is no global copyright law, but and you in the you know in in physical world you are working with the administrative barriers, you know, you you go from one country to another and you have to pass the the uh, you know country country barriers. Sorry, I can't remember the word, but. Uh, in internet, there are no barriers at all. You know, there are no borders. This border thing, there are no borders. You know, so uh, if someone wants to share the um, picture from uh, United States, he can actually. And uh, that's the question: how he will do it if uh, he has some uh, different copyright law uh, than the Czech person? You know, and this is what Creative Commons basically are trying to uh, trying to uh, help to solve. So it's a nonprofit organization founded in the USA in 2001 by this professor Lawrence Lessig. Uh, it is a set of pub uh, public licenses. Uh, it's an it's attempt to spread culture and creativity. And uh, there is a combination of licensing agreement. So basically, another key message of that, so Creative Commons, you have a, on one side, you have all rights reserved, copyright, you know. On the other hand, you have a no rights reserved with the uh, usually 70 years after the death of the author um, formula. That means that after that years, the artwork is so-called free and you can uh, you don't have to have license to, uh, to use this artwork. But then be between, you have some rights reserved, you know, and this is the Creative Commons, actually. This is the double C. So this is, the, this is also a key message to take away. So... Creative Commons, uh, Creative Commons licenses, just a moment, I will put this, oh, yeah, sorry, yeah, uh, Creative Commons licenses elements, uh, there are uh, six of them, actually, and there are, uh, there are uh, elements that determining the scope of competencies, and also there are elements that are uh, defining the condition to be respected. So uh, the scope of competences, it's the right to share the work, the, 
it can be disseminated. This is the right to share it uh, implicit to all six types of Creative Commons licenses. And then you have right to edit uh, the work that is, uh, that is possible to use in uh, some of these, uh, these licenses. Then, on the other hand, the elements defining the condition to be respected, you know. So this is basically uh, you can do something and you uh, should oblige, oblige something, you know, you should respect something. So uh, every license has the first one specif uh, specify the origin, uh, so-called attribution. This basically citation, you know, uh, but it's uh, it's um, written in the uh, in the license, so it's not like the ci citation itself, as you probably know it from your uh, from your academic careers. So that means that you should at least. Uh, give the author his or her name or pseudonym if it disappears or that or the title of the work the link to the work and the references to the original creative commons license must give it must be given uh, there is also um, a rule how to basically um, remember how to license well under creative commons or when you are using someone uh, someone um, artwork so how how you um, uh, how you attribute it right you know and the, the rule it's called tassel that means title author uh, source and license you know t a s l you know and if you remember that so you should you should be able to um, license or actually make the attribution right with creative commons license then there is a uh, there is a element uh, keep uh, your license. It's called share alike, or uh, it's based on the copyleft. Um, um, I would say yeah, copyleft agreement uh, that is sometimes present in the open source licenses. And then means that uh, if you use someone else's work and you modify it, so your modification should be shared on the, uh, with the same or compatible license. You know, with this you create the the community or group of uh, Creative Commons license uh, el elements or artworks, actually, and uh, the community is growing, basically, yeah. Then uh, there is more, uh, there are two more. So there is a restriction for using uh, commercially or non-commercially, and this is classical thing. And also uh, you can make or not make derivatives. That means that you, ca you are prohibited to modify the work or not. So basically, that means so right to share every type of six licenses of Creative Commons has this right. Then the specific the origin it's at every of these licenses again, and then right to edit the work, uh, keep your license, um, do not use work commercially, or do not modify, uh, do, do not make derivatives from the from the artwork. This is special for several of them. As you can see, uh, this is the, the usual way how it is represented. Uh, I will show better picture in coming, uh, coming slide. This is only a um, um, summary you know, of these slides to have it for you on the uh, all in one. Then uh, what's um, also special about these licenses, and this is special because they were uh, introduced in the era of internet, basically. There are three basic layers of these licenses, machine readable one, human readable and legal code you know and this is these two uh, no two sorry three parts of interoperability as it's called you know are crucial to make any open anything education uh, data uh, science uh, work you know in the practical way because you need a machine that's usually for example for open science publication it's the repository or the uh, publisher's website you know then you uh, you need uh, the, the you need uh, something to be uh, human readable you know because not everyone is lawyer you know and the internet so you you need a, a clear set of rules and then you have the legal code that basically uh, it's the legal binding document that uh, enables you this is the legal tool you know this is the part of the legal tool that is the, really the legal one <laughs> uh, that uh, that helps you to really make that contract and uh, there is a common joke between the lawyers uh, who are working within uh, these uh, licenses that uh, lawyers are not uh, not people or not humans because they have their own layer, you know. So that's that that's it. So basically, uh, just a moment. I will drink a little. So that means that you have six type of licenses 
plus one that's the public domain we can talk about it um, we can talk about it in the discussion but this is the six main creative commons licenses as you can see the attribution that's the that the guy you know if in the circle that is everywhere then uh, the sharing thing is implicit to the licenses so it's not represented by the you know, by the pictogram and then you have the sa uh, that means uh, share alike that you should uh, share your modified work also again uh, with this uh, license and say means non-commercial and and there means non-derivative so this is in total six six uh, uh, creative commons licenses lucy also spoke about a new version of uh, 4.0 of creative commons licenses so there is four version yet uh, as she mentioned there is no porting that means that the the licenses are not um, adapted to the national law, but they are, there is one international version that is translated to the Czech or Latvian or French, etc., and uh, it works on the international standards, you know. Of course, where it is um, in conflict, but it shouldn't be, but uh, it, it can happen in, I would say, one to five percent mostly you know i'll bet one person that uh, if it is con uh, in con uh, in uh, contra with the national law you know so uh, this means that it should be uh, it should be governed by the law uh, of the of the party that is um, um, not in advantage you know usually in the in the um, meaning if you are for example a company and you are selling to someone some uh, some people you know that are buying your stuff only so usually they are in the minor position that you are because you are the big company you are they are just one person you know so the uh, in this context uh, there is the international law principles to tackle these issues you know but you don't have to worry about that because the the, the really the percentage that you can uh, have a uh, problem with that is uh, so uh, minor that uh, basically don't worry about it yeah anonymity if required that is new thing that in the uh, version 4.0 uh, you can also claim as an author that you don't want to use any name you know that means that if you have the rule tassel title author source and license you will put out the a you will not use it you will just put for example the title of the artwork license and and source Exclusion of support that is explicitly written that, for example, if um, I would say Coca-Cola or Apple or something uh, is uh, some of these big companies, for example, or government is uh, sharing something under Creative Commons license, that doesn't mean that they are and you are using it, you know, so that doesn't mean that uh, they are supporting you. Yeah, this is explicitly written in the in the license. And then there is a 30 days to remedy the violation. And that means that before it was like that, that if you are not obeying this uh, license condition anymore, you lost the license. Of course, you can start obeying them again, so you get the license again. But now uh, it is more like that uh, there is a, this remedy uh, uh, clause that uh, if you um, if you make a remedy in 30 days, so you don't you don't lost uh, the first license basically but from the practical point of view for you uh, it doesn't mean um, i would say it you will not use it uh, you, you will not uh, notice it you know in practical way so this is it so these are the for example check version of creative commons 40 probably i'm not sure sorry i haven't looked at it if you have in latvia the the latvian version of that but it can be, or uh, someone from you can uh, translate it from the international version. So next is, uh, how many works are licensed with Creative Commons globally? This is basically 1.2 billion. It's the, uh, it's the number from 2018, I think. And it's growing rapidly in 10,000 uh, in week or, or even less. So uh, it will be soon uh, much more. So that's, just to give you a perspective how widely it is used and if you have time so there is a link to state of creative commons org you can read more information about these licenses so now about copyright law context so before we start uh, i would uh, give the floor to uh, one or two questions to have it more interactive so uh, please don't hesitate to ask i will look in the in the chat oh sorry yeah in the chat there is a one from Ilgonis Wilkes. 
Latvian law of outer rights says nothing about CC licensing. Can we still use legally CC licensing in Latvia? Oh yeah, uh, thank you for the question. Actually, this is uh, this is important that uh, Creative Commons licenses. It's not necessary that they are in the law. You know uh, that. Uh, basically, Latvian law will be uh, copyright law will be probably based on the international uh, international standards because you are part of European Union. So that means that you can use legally uh, Creative Commons licenses. Of course, I don't have a through um, I would say um, analysis of your uh, copyright legal uh, legal context, but uh, I would say for ninety eight or ninety nine percent that it's no problem to use. Creative Commons licenses in Latvia, and if you want, we can look at it with you. Uh, for example, we can talk with Gita and Alia uh, after that, and we we can try to. If you are able to, for example, uh, translate part of the Latvian copyright law in the uh, in English, that we can understand it. So uh, we could look at it, you know, for example, in coming weeks, and we can tell you. But uh, I think that there will be no problem uh, in that in using that. So, any other question? Because basically, Creative Commons is uh, it's constructing on the legal on copyright law legal system. You know that means that uh, you have these uh, you have usually uh, no rights reserved or all rights reserved, and copyright law is giving this some rights reserved, but it's building on the copyright law. It's not like contra or something else. You know, it's based on copyright law that you already have. Okay, is there any other question? I see chat. Oh yeah, I can see. Oh, great! Thank you, Lucy. So there is Latvian version, so you can use it. That's one hundred percent sure now. Okay, so I will go uh, with the uh, next uh, part of the presentation. So, sorry, 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 no, I don't want that. So copyright law context, because it's based on copyright basically. And um, so for that reason, you have to have a basic idea how copyright works, you know, and this I'm going to explain in uh, this section. So basically you have two, um, uh, two uh, main uh, roles, you know, a li licensor, and licensee, you know, licensor is author, for example, who gives the license, and licensee is the one who is receiving the license. So uh, the, the contract in general. So what does Creative Commons allow to the licensor? So for if you are an author, for example, scientist that uh, that is working on some publication, so you can with Creative Commons share a work on terms that uh, you are uh, you designate, you know. And at the same time, stand on the basis of copyright, you know, as, as we talked in the, uh, before. Then it's a super structure of copyright. Uh, it's called uh, Summer Rights Reserve, as I mentioned before, and uh, share the work under the terms of the author. So there is a, a so called chooser on creativecommons.org in English, and you can look at it and uh, pick what you want to do with the artwork, and it will generate you the legal, part, legal uh, layer. Uh, human readable layer and machine machine readable layer yeah as we were uh, we were doing here sorry here so if you use this uh, chooser so you will get these three layers and you can copy paste it to your web to your um, digital publication or you can even use it uh, with uh, non digital um, objects uh, of course there is a little bit uh, it's unpractical but it can be used then, how do I use uh, Creative Commons licenses? So um, there is a set of questions that you have to uh, keep in mind. First one, is the material you want to license subject to copyright? That's important, you know. Licenses, Creative Commons licenses works on copyright artwork. So if you don't have copyright artwork that I, for example, mentioned in the start, that's only your fault. Usually in the international context, uh, there is, for example, um, for example, um, in the Czech law, uh, there is a paragraph two and uh, two slash six uh, of copyright Czech law. And there is written that, for example, data by, by themselves, they are not, um, 
they are not uh, copyrighted our work, you know. So what does it mean? For example, you have a weather forecast, you know, and there is tomorrow will be 24 degrees Celsius, you know. So the number 24 degrees Celsius itself, it's not, for example, copyrighted work, you know. So that means that you can use it freely. You don't have to have license for, for the use. Then uh, the second thing you have um, to think about if you own the material you want to license, you know, basically. So if you have all the, uh, and this is connected to the third one, are you entitled to license it actually? So um, do you have all the rights, you know, for example, if you are working uh, for a university, so you probably, the, the, uh, the person that is entitled to license this work is probably your um, uh, maybe manager of the rec or director, you know, the, the one who gives you the work, you know, because you are in the work contract, you know. So this is important to uh, keep in mind that not uh, author is not always the one who has all the rights to do this, uh, to this sharing, you know. For example, at Czech, uh, there was also one question about how it works in Czech Republic, for example, at our university is that we have in the work contracts, we have a clause, a clause that uh, everything that I produce in my work is, uh, it belongs, the, these licenses for, for, for um, dissemination, etc. Uh, it belongs to the university. But on the other hand, we have internal directive that says in the type of scientific article and scientific, uh, scientific um, lecture on the conference, uh, the right to um, to make a contract, basically to give a license, uh, is uh, given to the outer back, I would say. Yeah, that, that's the, that's in short, you know, it, it has some special meanings, but in short, it means this. Then, are you aware, uh, the fourth point, uh, that CC licenses are irrevocable? That means that if you do that once, you know, that you can't bring it back. So that means that you should think twice before you license this, basically. That means that uh, if you put some article on the web, you put the Creative Commons license, and then you said, oh, but I will not, um, I don't want to share it anymore. So you can put it out of the internet, you know? And if nobody downloaded it before, you, it, it can't be used, of course, from the practical reason, but the license is still active. But in the, uh, in the uh, situation that someone already downloaded it and he, he has this, um, he, he was uh, acting in, uh, I would say, good faith, you know, that, that he was uh, obliging the license and he really gets the license by this condition. So he has, you, you have no right to stop him. That's important to know. Then the fifth one, you can not influence the copy uh, on the internet. Yeah, that's what I mentioned, sorry. And are you represented by a collective management organization? This is not on uh, scientific issues. This is more in the mu musician. So I will, I will skip this. And by granting the license to extend possibly you may, you have the royalty rights for the licenses excess, uh, exercise of rights. So this is basically uh, the, the answer uh, to the question uh, connected to the, uh, mostly to the music sector. So uh, then, and we can talk about it more in the uh, in the discussion. You have some special uh, type of uh, work. You know, you have employee work and school work. Employee work is the one, as I mentioned, with the university that the university uh, is uh, access uh, has the copyright um, the uh, the property rights of copyright are exercised by the employer, unless otherwise agreed. It is how it works in the Czech Republic. So this is uh, this the uh, the collaboration between the employer and employee is set in the employment relationship and in internal directors, for example, on uh, of university. On the other hand, school work is the, is the thing of the student, you know, you can use it as you want, but you have some special condition that you have to follow. For example, you can use your work that was created in school for in connection again with racism or terrorism, etc. because uh, because you are putting bad light on that university, for example, you know this is one of the uh, one of the reasons also. So basically, uh, the difference between employee and school work is that employee work 
if it is not stipulated differently, so uh, the employer has the rights to exercise these property rights of, uh, of copyright. On the other hand, the schoolwork is you as an author, as a student, are able to do whatever you want, but you have some condition that you have to follow. And if the university wants uh, actually to, uh, if the university wants to, uh, for example, if you are doing research in chemistry, I'm a chemist actually. So, so if you are doing a, um, research in chemistry, so you probably use some electron microscopy that costs a lot, you know, and you can have a patent, you know, after that, that you will sell for millions, you know, so university can say, hey, we have some, uh, some, uh, we, we had to spend some money, you know, for your schoolwork. So give us, I don't know, uh, 100,000, you know, for example, check grounds. So th this is how the schoolwork works differently from the employer work. And then, uh, you should know how do I express that the work is available under Creative Commons? How do I represent the work under these licenses? So this is basically uh, how it can be represented. This is a photo from Lucy and it says this work entitled Fluff on, on the Rocks, this one, by Lucy Strack uh, is available uh, under Creative Commons by for uh, international. The license terms are available at blah, 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 blah. You know, so this until here, you know, until the legal code dot, and this means this is a very nice uh, representation how you should um, basically uh, what kind of information you should put together with your artwork uh, that you are trying to license under Creative Commons. So, uh, and this, the rest of the slide says, while preserving these terms and condition and above all indicating the origin of the work, you are entitled to distribute edit even commercially. So if you want to give even more um, hints, you know, to the out, to the next user of your uh, outer artwork in the digital world, so you can put also this, but it's not necessary. This is the maximum way how to do it. Then, as you can see, uh, you have another one, uh, another representation, you know, and now uh, it's kind of complicated, right? You have six type of uh, one and plus five, but a uh, good message is that all variants are possible. So it depends only on the will of the provider uh, what information he wants to mention in the work, you know? And then uh, you should, uh, you should, uh, uh, the reasonable will of the provider actually, you know? So if he said, hey, I want there everything, you know, written my biography, etc. So this is not a reasonable will. And this is written also in the legal code. So if you are interested in your, uh, you can look in the, uh, in your translation of Latvian uh, Creative Commons. So, okay. Now the another part, licensee. So someone who is uh, receiving the license. So uh, another cat. So if you work with outer box, uh, is it always the use in the sense of the Copyright Act? That means like, um, yeah, that, that's it. So basically, uh, if you are li licensing something under the public licenses, you are working within the copyright law. Then, but you have some, uh, some special, um, I would say uh, it's um, uh, legal licenses, it's called in, in Czech and, uh, or law licenses. And this is typical quotation, you know. So uh, here is the check uh, quotation uh, paragraph. That means that you can use uh, for uh, small, uh, some small parts of the artwork, or you can use a small artwork itself, uh, or uh, you can um, use um, ex yeah, extra code that for, for example, teaching or illustrative purposes. So it's, um, it's the way when you are present, uh, preparing the presentation for your uh, teaching lesson and you use, for example, a picture from, I would say Google, or you would say from Flickr, for example, so, or another colleague's uh, part of the book, etc. But what's important is that uh, if the work uh, are, it's not anonymous, so you should always put the name of the person under whose name the work is made public. The name of the work and the source must always be mentioned, you know. So that means that even in the quotation, and that is kind of a bad uh, practice, for example, in the Czech Republic, but it's slow, it 
not slowly, but kind of rapidly changing, that even in this presentation for students, you know, for your class, you should use uh, proper attribution and proper uh, list of sources, you know, that you use uh, in other uh, artworks uh, during your lecture. Then you have another thing. Um, there is a usually uh, it's called uh, reproduction for personal use. Uh, that's the happy cat, you know. So if you are usually using it from uh, from um, personal use, that you can use already published work for non-commercial uh, purposes. It doesn't apply to usually to computer programs, no, uh, nodes, architectural works, electronic databases, etc. Uh, but uh, usually no. Uh, it's uh, important it, uh, to remember that it doesn't apply to computer programs, this one, but uh, you can use it for um, uh, for personal use. Yeah, that's it. We can talk about it in discussion. What does it mean? Uh, then how to correctly indicate the origin of work. That's the thing that I already mentioned. This is the title, author, source, and license of TASL. So then you can read it um, uh, basically during your, uh, when you have the presentation, uh, uh, after this lecture and how to correctly state the origin of the work so you can do it again broadly or you can use it uh, very uh, very shortly and as i mentioned before watch out for the offline art uh, you can of course use these creative commons licenses uh, and creative commons license artworks but you have to be uh, careful because it's more uh, it's not so practical and you can the, the, the problem is that you can't use hyperlinks so uh what to watch out for uh this is just uh, last a few slides uh as i mentioned before licenses sponsors support or is any way connected with you in any other way that means that this coca-cola or apple if you are using their images under this creative commons license that doesn't mean that they are supporting you and then uh, the last thing is if you use the work only for your personal purposes and you are no longer making it available to anyone, you do not to provide it with the origin information. So that means that if you download a picture and you just look at it basically, and I don't know, sometimes you open it because you like it and, or there is some quotation, you know, for Albert Einstein, for example, and you use it only for you, you don't have to put in your computer or when you print it, for example, you don't have to put a, a quotation, basically the origin. But uh, when you are publicly, pro uh, you are publicly uh, making it available to anyone else, so you should put that there. So um, when, no, last thing, where to search for Creative Commons works. Uh, there are There is a search.creativecommons.org when you can look at different type of uh, artwork material that is licensed in Creative Commons licenses. As you can see, uh, there is a CC search, open knowledge repository, internet archive, open educational resources common. And basically uh, in the CC research, there is a Flickr also uh, connected. There is a Google, um, uh, you can uh, see if you are sometimes uh, uh, looking for something with Google, then you should uh, use also the tools for the, um, uh, for the search. And in the tools, there is a rights to use. And if you basically click on it, there will be six type of rights uh, that, and this is connected with the, uh, with the Creative Commons uh, licenses, you know, basically these six, six uh, areas. So this is how a Creative Commons is uh, spread across the board. So, and now uh, also one of the question, was you know, what about data you know if i quote it well just give me a minute uh, what should be considered when you're using and combining data sets you know because and how uh, to use creative commons to research data sets and how to add attribution of license practically you know so basically uh it's harder not, not harder but it's more complex you know because in uh, uh with uh, research data you don't have only uh, copyrighted work you have also uh, database law you have uh, personal data and then you have some for example know-how etc so it's much more complex uh think of um uh, considering than uh, making uh open your publication basically 
uh, there are approximate they, there should be 64 uh, cases probable cases that you can uh, say the for example the art work is copyrighted uh, it has data bar, database rights but it doesn't uh, um, have any um, personal data etc you know so the, this this co if combination if you put uh, together you know you have uh, four, 64 you have 64 possible cases for this thing uh, there are approximately five of them. They are the most um, common one. And what we are doing, uh, going to do at Masek University during the, this, this winter, basically, we are building a new, new web called openscience.muni.cz. So we will put the practical example and um, description of these uh, open uh, these five common examples, how to reuse uh, data and data sets uh, in uh, in context of Czech Republic, but it will work basically uh, also for you. Uh, and we will make it also in English, you know. So uh, if you are interested, and I can I can uh, send it later to Gita and uh, Alia, and they can they can send it to you also. So where we are going to have it, so there is no problem. You can use this, but this will be for another one and a half hour to explain you maybe how to work with the data. But you can have specific question in the discussion, and I will try to uh, respond. So basically, uh, now we have a uh, discussion. I just want to mention several uh, last um, two things. Uh, thank you, of course. Uh, there is a, a information about how the Creative Commons works in the Czech Republic, what was the history of it. Uh, there is a helpful links and resources. It's most uh, in Czech, but um, maybe you can find some, the Creative Commons uh, CZ will be uh, in uh, English in coming, uh, in coming here next year. So uh, this is uh, also possible. Then there are attribution as we used it in the, in the presentation. And so now it's the uh, time for the question. And uh, as I can see, there are uh, two of them in the uh, two new questions and answers. So I will try to uh, answer these first. And then if anyone else uh, wants to ask, for example, directly or uh, by chat, um, you can. So uh, how should I mention the changes which I make in CC documents? For example, I use the, uh, CC teaching materials which I modify for my students, and it is hard to mention all the places which I have uh, adjusted. OK, so if it is presentation, so you can, uh, for example, mark somehow the, the, the slide, or there usually you have these slide numbers, you know, and then in the end, you will just put it there, you know, and how you should uh, mention the changes you should mention the changes, you know, in um, as was written here, uh, as was written here. Just a moment, reasonable will of the provider, you know. So uh, be reasonable. Yeah, that that's the important. Uh, Miss uh, Miss uh, Ilze Birzni, I'm sorry for uh, putting your name maybe wrongly. So I hope that I answered this question. Uh, then. Uh, Ilgonis Bilks, uh, EU in 2009 19 has adopted use of Creative Commons International and CC0. What about early CC license version? Of course, um, now if we have 4.0, use 4.0, you know, and you have the translation as Lucy sent it in the chat uh, in, uh, in Latvia. So use that, and of course, the rest of them works also, but they can have sm so some small special differences, but usually. Uh, it should be uh, it should be uh, it should be okay in general, you know. But uh, the the more higher you go, so there is more compatible with the current version. That that's the, that's the clue. Okay. So now I will look in the chat. Just a moment. Chat. Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, Lucy mentioned C19 and new challenges. We are about to work at the university strategy for 2025 as a lot of work and quality indicators are related to citation, publication, etc. Do you see that number of publication will decrease? What are the steps you are doing to predict forecast the movement, uh, how it will affect the universities, all communities? So I'm not sure if Lucy is still here with us. Lucy, are you here? Okay, if not, so I will answer that because we, uh, I have also practi uh, practical um, experience with that. Basically, uh, there is strong intention in the communities to not 
make m as many publications as possible because it is contra the uh, scientific quality, you know, basically. So this, um, and the, the forecast, it's probably that there will be, for example, maybe in the future, we were talking with our uh, advisory board on open science at the university, that then maybe there will be only one publication per, for example, PhD, you know, but there will be a lot of data connected to the publication, you know, and uh, for example, now we are working in the Czech Republic and also our organization is working on, on change of the evaluation of science in the context uh, also that the research data are eligible and uh, secondly that uh, more uh, in in the context less is more you know as um, um, there is a, there was a famous architect uh, Ludwig Miss van der Rohe he, he created the Villa Tugendhat that's our UNESCO monument here in Brno and he is, he was the functionalist architect actually and he, he he has a quote less is more you know so probably this is the forecast for for a number of publication in coming years. It, maybe it will just stabilize to 2025, but till 2030 probably will decrease because um, there is a huge initiative called European Open Science Cloud that is coming and it will be fully operational by 2022, 25, sorry. So uh, this will impact, you know, the sign, um, definitely. It's one, it's more, more than 1 billion uh, euros initiative uh, for Europe. So everything is clear. Uh, thank you for that. So now any questions you can also ask directly. You know, you don't have to write only in chat if you have the possibility to ask. And maybe I pass uh, the word to Gita if she wants to moderate the discussion, for example. Maybe you could give more information about what have to do journal creators and publishers? Yes. Uh, okay, yeah, this is a good question. Thank you. I, I have here also uh, several questions, so I will answer them um, step by step. So, uh, you know, uh, journal and author, this is a contract, you know, there has to be some sort of contract, you know. And what what's important, uh, there is a, also for you and it works like that in Czech Republic. It works like that with European funding. So probably it will work uh, as the, the same in the Latvian funding. You have also contract as a scientist, for example, you have the contract with the funding agency and funding agency said, your research output should be open access, you know? So for that reason, that is the basic condition that you should follow to have this money, basically. And if you make a contract with the publisher, that doesn't allow uh, the uh, open access regime of publication, you are basically breaching the contract with the, with the funder. So this is not good to practice. So what you should do? So you should, uh, it's quite, I would say quite simple. Uh, you should be all the time aware about the condition of your contract with the funder. If there is a problem, for example, what happened in Czech Republic, it happened that sometimes the author wants to pub, uh, publish in some journal, sorry, uh, he wants to publish in some journal uh, that is not allowing open access, you know. So in that reason, you should, before that you sign up your article to the publisher, you know, you should probably ask to your grant uh, funding agency if it is okay or not, you know. If they say that it's okay, so you can publish, no problem at all, and you get your points, you get your uh, article, etc., and you are happy. If uh, they say no, you have to apply with the, uh, with the principles, so uh, then uh, you have to uh, think uh, to talk with the publisher, you know. And there are two things, you know, the publisher usually has general conditions where it's written what you can do with the article itself. And there is 82% of all publishers enable so-called green open access. You know, there is a difference between gold open access that usually it's the paid one and green open access. And there is very good chance that also the, the, the funding agency allows you to uh, fulfill this condition by green open access. So you should look for the first, uh, for the first, uh, point on this option. If it is not possible, so you have to look on Creative Commons Gold, um, open access, for example, paid open access. If uh, this, if you have no money, for example, for that, so then the last option, if you really want to publish in that article is that you are, uh, you are, um, you, 
write to the publisher and you try to make a, a reason with him, you know. And we have a good experience at Masak University that uh, four from five publishers said, oh, this is okay for this article if you have such conditions because we like it, for example. Yeah, so hopefully I answer this question, Gita. Uh, I was thinking more um, what have to do the publisher. publisher. Uh, I okay. think that uh, who, um, university publishers, for example, the, the publisher have to organize the his uh, work so the authors could uh, use these CC licenses and so on. The uh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. For example, if, they have uh, to do it. Okay, okay. Look, not do it is not quality. It's not quality of work if they not using some licenses or agreements with authors. No, no. Every time uh, the, the license, actually, the agreement can be usually uh, it is written, but it hasn't to, you know, it, it can be also like oral agreement, you know, but uh, then you don't have the legal, uh, we, we call it legal certainty, you know, that, that the publisher will not or the author will not change the mind next day, you know, and you don't have evidence about it. So basically, every time from the legal perspective, from the conceptual point of view, every time if you are uh, signing or, or giving someone a, 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 the uh, artwork, the, the, the article to, for example, to be licensed, to be published, sorry. So uh, you are, you have to do it by some, uh, some uh, concept of copyright law, basically, and you do it by the contract, you know, and the contract has not to be written. Uh, it can be oral, but that, um, that um, that doesn't make sense, you know. This is not a good practice, you know. But so so basic line is every time when you pass your article to the publisher, there is some sort of contract, you know. That that's the baseline, you know. Second thing is that if you have this um, uh, gold open access, for example, uh, if you pay for making this uh, open uh, accessible in nature, for example, so usually it's like that that you. Uh, you give uh, exclusive license, so all rights you give uh, of these property rights you give to the publisher. And publisher said, yeah, you pay me 3000 euros, so I will uh, put this article under licenses Creative Commons by, for example, the less restrictive one. And then you as author, you are not using it on uh, based on your um, your uh, original license or your um, your original yeah license not license but rights for the artwork that is yours but you are using it on the uh, basis of these creative commons licenses basically you are uh, he he basically sold you the license that that's one thing you know another thing what's happening with the open access publishers for example in diamond diamond gold uh, open access that are not uh, taking money for for publishing is that they said hey there is a process uh, you 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 make an agreement with us for example that uh, during the process of revision blah 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 something you know the conditions of the of the process and then in the end that means that you are obliged yourself to publish it under creative commons licenses so basically uh, after the work is accepted, you put the Creative Commons licenses yourself on that uh, on that work, and based on this license, the publisher is not, uh, later using it in their system. It is this one what you wanted? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we have uh, more five minutes only. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Uh, for example, you ask about the Scopus here and basically how it's working with the evaluation of science. Evaluation science in Czech Republic is slowly changing. Uh, we had a very uh, old, uh, be before in 2015, 16, there, uh, there was still an old system of evaluating science that was, uh, this was about impact factor, you know, that uh, uh, it, it was called like the, the the machine for making coffee, you know, because as many you made, you get the points, you know, and this was uh, well criticized. So now we have a methodology 2007 plus and it's in progress methodology 2021 plus. And these methodologies should also evaluate the science and institution also in another context that only in the as many articles as possible. You know? uh, there is our community, basically, of open access managers, also our open content organization and others are pushing uh, quite a lot now 
to to make open research data or research data in general these data sets you know as an eligible output also and to be evaluated and we are doing the same at the university we are trying to think about the mechanism they are not implemented yet but about the mechanism that would uh, benefit also uh, someone who is doing for example a really great data set that others are working on that you know but he is not publishing you know for that he is creating the data set the general data that the others are using for the publications you know so we are trying to think about it at the university somehow then uh, yeah that that's it and um, yeah that's basically i hope that i also think you you mentioned also scopus here uh yeah uh what you know uh basically scopus it's um part of uh if i'm uh sorry i can't remember that it is correct but it's part of um there's science direct you have scopus you know you have web of science and all these you know so yes. these uh, these are aggregated uh, sorry Yes, citation database. It is citation database, yeah. something similar to Web of Science. Yes, and yes. are you using that? Uh, yeah, we are of course using it in the Czech Republic, and there is also what we have kind of special, and I'm not sure if it is in Latvia. We have a national information system of uh, research um, uh, projects, research publication, and we will put in that system also info about where to find uh, data sets, you know, in the future. So. This is the national database of research, basically, you know, of people doing research, people, uh, the project, publicly funded project and outputs of that. That doesn't mean that uh, they are all open. This is only metadata catalog that we know that they exist, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, based on that, uh, so uh, the metadata, it's key principle in this, that all these databases should implement some sort of uh, filter, how you can, uh, you can sort the open articles and non-open articles, I would say with that. So, of course, Scopus, Web of Science, etc., they are working with that, but uh, these are not publishers, actually, you know. The publisher is Elsevier, Springer Nature, uh, Wiley, etc. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, do you allocate? Yes, we have a possibility to uh, have a DOI and we are now working in the mechanism how to make it practical for our authors at university, if I'm talking from the Masaryk point of view, Masaryk University point of view. Uh, yes, this is important aspect that researchers wants and for now, because we don't have it uh, fully operational, so uh, we have um, uh, we uh, we give uh, Zenodo, if you apply to Zenodo, the international, you know, um, the database or uh, repository that is governed by CERN, so they will give you DOI for free for your data set, that's one thing. And now we are working with an uh, application called Data Stevarchi Wizard for the data management, and these data management plans are machine actionable. And there is a thing that part of this development of this application is also based in Czech Republic. It's a co uh, combination with Netherlands and Czech Republic. And for life sciences researchers, maybe you know uh, Elixir. So this is part of Elixir, and we are trying to apply it also in humanities. So if you are interested in that, uh, we can also provide you a contact to the person that is developing them. And this will work, of course, with DOI and identifiers, etc. And we are now thinking about national uh, org ID uh, consortia with the National Technical Library. Any more questions? I can't see here. No. Okay. So thank you, Lucy, and thank you, Iji. If there will be some more questions, I will send you by email. Yes. Okay. Yeah, no problem. Send it. We, okay. will, we are able to respond till I will say one or two weeks. You know, with yes. the, with the, but uh, but no problem. No worries. Thank we you. Will. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you for webinar, and have a good evening today. And thank you for inv inviting us. It was a real pleasure. Bye-bye. Bye-bye to Latvia.